Hi, this is Jim from Trek World. In 2005, CBS decided to do something that would change the face of Star Trek forever. CBS remastered the entire Star Trek original series using 2K high-resolution scans of the original 35mm film for each episode, complete with new color balances, advanced image processing, and most importantly, all of the old-fashioned optical effects that were used in the series back in the 60s were updated with the very latest state-of-the-art computer graphic imaging. It appeared that the original 1966 Star Trek television series was entering into the new millennium in style. Now, before we get started, I have a special treat for you. As a member of the first generation of Trekkies, Star Trek looked like this to me when I was growing up. Each episode had been sent to the local stations in rolls of 16mm color film. When combined with the low resolution of early analog television, the Enterprise appeared very much like what you see here. If you had a VCR in the 1970s, this is what you would have recorded as you made your own tapes of Star Trek. Now, when they did that, the original versions of Star Trek were slowly but surely removed from all online streaming services. Over the next few years, what the original series looked like with its original optical effects has become somewhat of a memory. In fact, the only way that you can actually see the original optical effects is to buy this series on DVD or Blu-ray where they make a version of it available for you to be able to see. Other than that, you can't find it anywhere else. So now that you've been reminded of exactly how poor quality the original TV episodes were in syndication, we can all appreciate the DVD clips that we're going to be looking at all the more. And we're going to go back and show you all of those original effects. If you've got them on Blu-ray, then fine. That is absolutely perfect. But if you don't, if you don't own a Blu-ray set or a DVD set, and you live in the world of streaming like so many people do, this is probably the only time that you're going to see all of these in one place. We will actually review every scene ever filmed of the Enterprise to be used in the original series. So now that we have the technical stuff out of the way, let's get to the good stuff. The purpose of this video is to review the original non-CGI shots of the 11-foot model in Star Trek and see what they look like. I'm going to break these videos down into the pilots that we're looking at today, Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3. We'll take a look at each shot as it was created for the very first time and in what additional other episodes that shot may or may not have shown up yet. And I will use the best non-CGI footage that I can find, which will probably be from those DVDs rather than VHF, so that we actually can see it at its best clarity on the screen as we review these. And here is that first appearance of the 11-foot model, and indeed its only appearance in the first pilot, the cage. Clocking in at just under 13 seconds in length, it would be one of the more elaborate shots ever recorded for the Enterprise. The viewpoint moved at least three times in a single shot. First, the view moves to the left to make the model appear to have come in from the left. Then, it zooms in a little bit to make it look as if the model were rapidly approaching. And finally, it rises above the model at an angle to make it appear that the model tilted downward in our direction. Although the complete clip is shown in the intro to the cage, it would never appear again in its entirety. Instead, the shot would be cut into its three basic distinct sections and formed the basis for the very first stock footage that was to be used in Star Trek. Now, the first part of the shot, which I will refer to as TC1, was only used three more times after the cage. They basically took the first six seconds or so of the master clip and they slowed it down by about 40%. It didn't stay around long, one of the reasons they dropped it was that the shot really highlighted the old wooden nacelles instead of the lighted ones that had been installed after the two pilots. Ironically, the very last time it was seen was in the third season episode of Is There In Truth No Beauty? I've not really been able to identify why they dusted it off and used it after two years, but my experience is that everything they did on the show was driven by cost. Now, after season two had been filmed, the model was placed in storage would there remain for several years. So they obviously identified a need for a shot and decided to go ahead and run the clip one more time. 
Now, TC2 is made literally from the middle piece of the original shot, as it actually doesn't go far enough to let us see the top of the bridge. Again, they didn't use it for long because of those unlit nacelles. The shot was only used three times in the first six episodes filmed. And finally, TC3 was first used in season one, where it would be used with the normal star field behind it. But beginning in season two, only the epileptic seizure-inducing version of the flashing clip was shown. First with By Any Other Name in season two, and then finally in season three with Is There in Truth No Beauty? Now, as everybody knows, NBC turned down the original pilot. They asked Desilu to make a second pilot. So word was given on June 11th, 1965, that another pilot had been ordered. But this time, Gene wanted lights in the 11-foot model. In particular, he wanted running lights on the saucer and in the secondary hull. The addition of the lighting effects were actually pretty complex. The port side of the model was drilled into so that they could accommodate running the electrical cables through it. Light bulbs were installed in the secondary hull, the dorsal, the saucer, which illuminated windows that had been cut into the skin of the model, and blinking white anti-collision lights were also added to the saucer and secondary hull. After the changes were made, the Enterprise sat atop a new swiveling floor stand that would now allow them to film the model from a variety of angles. Unlike the first pilot, this time, dozens of photos and video clips were created of the 11-foot model for use in the second pot. Now, one of the things that I wanted to point out to pertains to the various urban legends that surround the mystery of how they were able to show the port side of the model in spite of the fact that beginning with this pilot, holes had been cut into the port side of the model in order to run wires needed for the light. Once those holes had been cut, it was never going to be practical again for them to film from the port side. However, it does appear that at least one photo was taken of the port side of the model during these sessions. As you can see here, the wooden nacelle caps and the oversized window at the very top of the saucer confirms it was filmed during the second pilot. You can also see, however, where they began to drill holes and wires through the port side. Uh, the picture quality is not all that great, but you can still see that the port side still had the numbers, letters, and pennants from when the model had been initially delivered. For now, I just want to point out that the left side of the screen shows how they were able to make it look like they were filming the port side, but they really weren't. We'll take a closer look at that in a few moments. They shot a total of six different shots in Where No Man Has Gone Before. Well, actually, they did seven, but there was an additional shot they made but didn't use until well after the series was underway. We'll take a look at that scene later when we review the episode that it debuted in. Now, the first shot we'll look at from the second pilot is what I call slow approach. Pretty obvious from watching it how I got that name. This shot would be used at various speeds and in flipped directions in nine more episodes in the first and second season. It would, however, ultimately be replaced by footage of the model after the nacelles had been lit up. The second clip was used in 41 episodes. As before, every time you'll see it, you see the solid wooden cell caps instead of the lighted ones. This resulted in the Enterprise alternating between the wooden cells and the lighted ones in the same episodes. Now, the barrier shot of the Enterprise approaching the barrier was only used one more time in the second season episode by any other name. Now, much like the side view we looked at earlier, this clip, which I call Ride into the Sunset, was actually used in all three seasons. And if you thought 41 episodes was impressive, this one appeared in 60. You can always spot it because the end of the nacelles have the vent lines in them. It is often shown composited over a different planet or different objects. And at other times, like many other clips, it is shown flipped. It is also the only clip featured in the opening credits of all three seasons. Now, this shot, which I called In Orbit, was only going to be used one more time, and that was in The Enemy Within. It would go on to be featured in the opening credits for seasons two and three, which was a pretty odd choice, considering the fact that, one, you can see the wooden nacelles beautifully here, and two, the giant lighted window that Gene had placed at the front of the bridge section on the saucer is also very obvious. Now, this last shot I call Breaking Orbit, 
I actually remembered seeing this shot in the old syndicated packages, even though it was only used in the first two episodes of the first season. It was a very unique perspective to see the Enterprise coming at you from the planet. Now, you may remember that I told you there were actually seven scenes shot, but only six were used. The seventh scene showed up in Dagger of the Mind later on in the TV series. It was only used the one time. Note, this is actually an example of them using the reversed letters on the model's right-hand side to make it look as if the left side were being filmed. Many people originally believed this shot was an urban legend created during the earliest conventions in the 1970s. Originally, it was believed they used a decal to do this, and you see them at the bottom of the screen here, but upon close examination of the actual model in the Smithsonian during one of its recent restorations, revealed that they actually covered the normal letters with paper that had been painted to match the nacelle, and then the reverse letters were put on top of that paper. This was done to make it easy for them to take the shot apart, because they didn't have to remove anything. They just simply peel off the paper and go back to work. However, at the end of the day, it actually proved far more simple for them in the future to simply flip the shot and cut the ship just before the registry would appear. Now, the way you can tell this is definitely the left-handed side, even if you were not lucky enough to have the blue screen right in front of you, is you'll notice that the letters appear correct to us, and there is also that block of wood under the pennant. Remember, the starboard side had the block of wood, the port side did not. So whenever you see correct numbers and a block of wood, they had to be using the reverse lettering. Now, before we start reviewing the special effect shots used to film the Enterprise for season one, let's take a quick look at the shots of the 11 foot model that were actually used to make the season one title credits. Notice that the only shot in the credits that uses the actual production model is the one in the lower left hand clip that I've marked as season one can tell this because the nacelles are actually lit up. The other two came from a second pilot. Everything else in the season one credits was footage taken of the three foot model. We've already done that shot library. I'm gonna put it right up here on the top right hand corner here so that you can watch it after the video. So welcome to season one. Once they got the order from NBC to produce the series, Gene asked for another round of modifications to the 11 foot model. They removed the big lighted window from the top of the saucer, and they made a few alterations that makes it very easy for us to identify which version of the model was used when we look at an effect shot. One, they replaced the painted on vents on the back of the nacelles with small spherical protrusions. Two, they reduced the size of the deflector dish. Three, they put spinning lights into the nacelles front caps. That's the money shot, ladies and gentlemen. That was the big update here. For those of you interested in how that was done, take a quick look at the top right photo and you will see what those lights look like without the plastic domes. They used Christmas tree lights and a small spinning armature that was originally designed for animating merchandise in department store display windows. So the first episode of season one to actually introduce this new footage that they had just filmed was the Corbomite maneuver. It happened to be the third episode in production and they actually introduced to us five new library shots. The first of which is a simple shot of the Enterprise standing still in space. The first time we see this was obviously in the Corbomite maneuver like you see here, and the Enterprise is being held at bay by a spinning space buoy. The shot was also used in Who Mourns for Adonis, where the spectral hand of Apollo grips the ship. In Balance of Terror, the shot would be used several times, including once where the shot was tilted counterclockwise to represent the Enterprise being damaged by that unknown plasma weapon that the Romulans were using. And finally, she would be shown simply sitting still in Arena and Journey to Babel. Now, the next clip we're going to look at is a shot of the Enterprise firing her phasers. As you will see, they really had an issue trying to standardize what weapons on the Enterprise looked like. In this case, the phasers were a simple red beam. Now, in Balance of Terror, they hadn't thought of photon torpedoes yet, but they wanted to have something that could go off like a depth charge. So they invented a weapon that was only used twice in the entire series, and they called it proximity phasers, shown here as some kind of pulsing energy weapon. In addition to Balance of Terror, it also showed up in Errand of Mercy, then was never seen again. And here in Arena, the 20th episode that they had filmed, 
We see the shot being used again, but this time for photon torpedo firing, although it's fired from the same location that the phasers were. They change the consistency and the color of the beam one more time. They return to red standard phasers in the 34th episode film Who Mourns for Adonis, this time showing the ship shooting phasers down on a planet while the Enterprise sits still in space. Now, the third shot they created for the Corbomite maneuver was the first real heavy-duty shot that they would continue to use a lot, in fact. It actually appeared in 20 additional episodes. The whole idea behind here was, of course, a flyby sequence that showed off the lighted nacelles rather than the wooden ones with a spike on it that we were seeing everywhere else up to this point. Now, the fourth shot they created for the Corbomite maneuver was a one-shot. They never used it again. Basically, it was a fixed shot of the 11-foot model composited against a zoom-in on the Viserius. Some people may believe this is the 3-foot model, but they would be mistaken, because you can clearly see the lights on the model, and the 3-foot model never had any lighting. Now, shot 5 is another utility shot. It's a view over the starboard nacelle. It is sometimes used with an optical breakaway that you see here where the ship veers towards port. They used it a total of 18 times before they replaced it later in the series with another shot. Now, the fourth episode that they filmed was Mud's Women, and in addition to three beautiful women, it also gave us four beautiful shots, and they would be used in a lot of episodes after this. In fact, these four shots from Mud's Women made the vast majority of appearances of the Enterprise throughout the television series. Now, this orbit away from us should be no surprise to you that this is probably the second most used shot in Star Trek. They used it in a total of 58 episodes. Now, this is another orbit, but this time instead of orbiting away from us, they are orbiting around the planet towards us. This is the most used shot in Star Trek history. It's the only shot of the production version of the Enterprise that ever appeared in any opening credits, and they removed it after the first season, thereby removing the only footage that had ever been filmed of the production model in any of the Star Trek credits. They used this in 58 episodes, very much the way that they did Orbit Away. The reason, however, that this is by far the most popular one is they had used it multiple times in each episode, resulting in a total of a whopping 112 times, excluding its appearance in the season one credits. So this shot I tend to refer to as pass under, and as you take a look at it, you can clearly see what it's doing. The Enterprise is coming towards us and will pass slightly overhead. These four shots that we just saw contributed in more Star Trek episodes than any other films that were done before or after in the Star Trek TV series. So how appropriate is it that an episode that contains the word terror in its name would produce a clip that would be used 13 times in Star Trek? In Balance of Terror, we're given a new shot that was pretty different from anything we had seen up to this point. Basically, it is a side starboard profile picture of the Enterprise as she slowly veers to the port side and departs away from us. So for the Galileo 7, they filmed one additional scene that they needed. It's a small clip that shows the Enterprise at full stop, but this time at an angle and slowly turning to port until it's in complete profile. They also used it in Tomorrow is Yesterday. So next up is a shot from The Alternative Factor, which was the 20th episode to be filmed. It's a single shot shown from behind the ship. They would only use this one time before they would choose a different rear shot to replace it. So now the 21st episode ever filmed was Tomorrow is Yesterday. And in that, they actually gave us three new shots. Now the first of which is the side profile showing the Enterprise climbing through the atmosphere. Now, there's a lot of confusion when people watch this episode. They actually used both the three-foot and the 11-foot models in these shots. Only the side profile shot was the 11-foot model. You can clearly see that the lights are flashing. The three-foot model had no lights. Any other shot of the Enterprise against this blue sky that was not a side profile shot 
but was in fact an angled shot, was of the three-foot model. Now, I'm sure this probably happened more than once, but in my notes, I thought it was sort of interesting. This next shot is a little bit unusual. It was cut from a longer shot that had been filmed in support of Space Seed. But because Space Seed aired after Tomorrow Was Yesterday, you actually ended up seeing this clip in Tomorrow Was Yesterday before you end up seeing it in the episode that it was filmed for. Now, the third shot to come out of Tomorrow's Yesterday is very close to the full stop clip that we saw a few minutes ago, except this time the ship is bouncing around in the shot. Now, this was probably created by moving the image optically because trying to jerk the model or the camera, which was fixed on tracks, by the way, really wasn't practical. And now the 22nd episode filmed was Return of the Archons. Once again, they filmed yet another shot at the Enterprise flying by the camera, but in this shot, they don't actually really pass us by. Instead, the deflector dish zooms straight up to the camera and then cuts. They use this in eight episodes total. Okay, so as we move up to Space Seed, this is perhaps the most complicated shots that were ever filmed for the original series. Not only did they need new shots of the Enterprise, but they needed shots which had both the Enterprise and the Botany Bay in the same film frame, since the cost and time of optically compositing the Botany Bay with existing footage was prohibitive. Remember that back in the mid-1960s, the most advanced thing you could do was optical compositing, putting the two images together like a double exposure, and it was very time-consuming. So as you can see by all of these photos, they put both models on the same stage and filmed them all at the same time. This is the only time that I'm aware of that the 11-foot model was actually filmed with another model physically present in the same frame. And after all that work, they ended up creating four new shots for the series. All four actually came out really nice, even by today's standards. The first one is a simple shot of the Enterprise simply pulling up beside the Botany Bay. Now, it almost might look like the Enterprise is docking with the Botany Bay, but it's not. It's coming up beside it. They never really explain why the Enterprise had to be so close to the Botany Bay when all they were going to do was beam people back and forth. Perhaps it needed to be that close for them to actually use the tractor beam to tow it. Now, this is quite similar to the earlier shot where we had the Enterprise at full stop and slowly turning to port, but this time we see both the Enterprise and the Botany Bay turning together slowly. Now, this is a very unique shot. The Botany Bay is actually bobbing up and down slowly beside the Enterprise. I mentioned a few moments ago that you probably couldn't shake the camera or shake the 11-foot model to create that wobble or bouncy effect, but with the Botany Bay being as small as it was, they were able actually to make the Botany Bay, Bay bounce around while they were filming the scene. Okay, now this is basically a similar shot to the first one we reviewed, except in this case, the Enterprise is pulling away from the Botany Bay. Okay, the 29th episode film, Operation Annihilate. So they created another flyby shot, but one whose speed is faster than the traditional flyby, but is still slow enough that the ship doesn't just become a blur the way it does in the credits. They only used it one more time in the Tholian web. But this is the same shot that has the distinction of also appearing years later in a major motion picture. This is the same shot that Shatner sees through the periscope in Airplane 2. So in Season 2, they decided to make some changes to the opening credits. They now listed, created by Gene Roddenberry, on the main Star Trek title, and they added DeForest Kelly as Dr. McCoy. While making these editing changes, they decided to make some edits in the ship sequences as well. They shortened the first clip, which had originally shown the Enterprise flying towards you and then speeding away, and instead only used the latter part of that shot. They removed the orbiting shot that previously had been used where you could actually see the lights in the nacelles, and they replaced it with an almost identical shot taken during the second pilot where they weren't lit. Between those two shots, they inserted another second pilot shot showing the Enterprise passing from left to right. Now, I'm not entirely sure what prompted them to make the ship changes, but the final result did have a few positive aspects. One, they now showed the side profile of the Enterprise, which admittedly is one of the best library assets they ever had. Two, all of the new shots resulted in the same colored planet. And three, all the shots are now from the second pilot. So even though they did not show the lighted nacelles, 
everything else was at least uniform going forward in the series credits. Now, season three would not introduce any additional changes to the Enterprise shots used in their credits. So up first for season two is the 31st episode filmed Metamorphosis, where they created two brand new shots needed for the episode. So this first clip is one I call up next, and it'll be fairly self-explanatory as we go along. Very similar in structure to the original Cage shot, this also was part of a longer clip where the Enterprise slowly turns to face you and then pulls in tight to the top of the saucer. The entire sequence was never used. Instead, this scene was shown at various lengths in a total of eight different episodes. It is most widely seen in the next time trailers that ran after each episode that told you what was happening next time on Star Trek. As such, people who discovered Star Trek in syndication never saw these trailers because syndication aired out of order. We never got a chance to see them until the release came out in home video years later. Now, the second shot I call beauty shot for obvious reasons. It's an absolutely beautiful shot that really highlights those multicolored nacelles. This is perhaps the very best shot ever done that actually allows us to examine the way that the lights rotated in the nacelles. Too bad they only used it one time. Next up is a fan favorite and definitely a Star Trek heavyweight. Filmed 35th Doomsday Machine. Needed a whopping total of 49 ship shots. And that is the most shots ever used of Enterprise models in a single episode. For Doomsday Machine, they needed to film shots of the Planet Killer. So they used the opportunity to film two new shots of the 11-foot Enterprise as well. Now, the first shot was shown tight in on the Enterprise with a composited image of one of the 18-inch AMT models blowing slightly to the rear of the Enterprise. Used in six episodes total, this shot would be used in later episodes where the camera would actually start a little bit more pulled out and then pull into frame tighter around the bridge. The second shot is a beautiful left-to-right shot that shows off the lighting effects of the ship in great effect. They would use this in only three more episodes, including one instance where they used it to fire phasers. Uh, wait a minute. What is this here? Okay, it is obviously not the 11-foot model. And there's no record of a three-foot model ever being used in the second or third seasons to represent the Enterprise. So exactly what is this little stowaway? To get our answer, we need to go back and look at a prop made for the episode Cat's Paw. In that episode, an alien created what basically was a voodoo doll of the Enterprise. Seen here in a photo, she exposed it to a flame and the temperature of the real Enterprise spiked dangerously high. Then she sealed it in a block of lucite in order to trap the Enterprise within a force field. To film the episode, they created two identical metal models, one of which was encased in lucite. After the series was over, the one sealed in lucite was donated by Matt Jeffries to the Smithsonian. The other one used to film in the Doomsday Machine was never seen again. Now, if you're still trying to wrap your head around the fact that they actually filmed the three-inch Enterprise, and trust me, a lot of people will argue with me on this, but it is actually factual. You can see it in the photographs and in the clip. And if you were actually thinking, well, maybe even ship that was an AMT model. They used a bunch of them in the episodes. Take a close look at this footage of the AMT model. Notice the damage and the position of the nacelles. The nacelles were straight in the metal model, and there was no damage on the metal ship. So next up on our agenda is Mirror Mirror, the 39th episode filmed. This particular shot was filmed during the making of Where No Man Has Gone Before. As before, this ship was actually filmed using the reverse registry numbers. It was the second of two shots filmed during the second pilot that featured those reverse numbers, but neither shot ended up being used in the second pilot. Instead, they were used as stock footage by other episodes during the season. Now, next up is the 42nd episode filmed, The Trouble with Tribbles. They needed to create three new clips of the Enterprise so that they could composite it optically over the K7 miniature. So for those of you out there that didn't know, due to the abundance of photograph and film evidence that was recorded for these shots, it was a great choice by the Smithsonian to use the appearance of the 11-foot model in this episode as what was to be used as the baseline for how the Smithsonian would restore the model in 2016. Now the first shot I call Inside Nacelle, and they only used this shot one additional time in the Ultimate Computer. It was a stationary shot 
from the rear of the 11 foot model and then they composited in the K7 model to make it look like the Enterprise was closing in on her when in reality, they were just zooming in on the K7. Now, like what happened with Tomorrow Was Yesterday, they needed to use the three foot model in conjunction with the 11 foot model in order to provide the illusion of distance and depth when composited with the K7 station model. Now, ironically, they actually used a still photo of the 11 foot model and then physically moved the photo optically across the frame. If you watch the video, you will see the Enterprise is completely lit up, but the lights are not moving in any way. Another trivia point, they modified an AMT model so that it had moving to cell lights. Every time they used an AMT Enterprise, it was pretty much destroyed at the end of the shot. So it caught the world pretty much off guard when Matt Jeffries offered the model used here for a charity auction in 2001. As you can see from the screenshot now, the model is currently in Paul Allen's Pop Culture Museum in Seattle and is in fact the only surviving AMT model ever used in the Star Trek original series. Now the third shot is fairly nice. The Enterprise crosses the bow of the saucer as she slowly pulled further and further into the frame. This was a great photo and was actually useful and beautiful at the same time. As such, they used it in 10 episodes total. The 44th episode filmed was Journey to Babel. And in that, they needed a new phaser firing shot. The result was one of the most iconic photos that we've ever seen, and they used it from here on out when the Enterprise fired phasers. As such, it would be used a total of 15 different episodes. And if the above clip looks even more familiar to our older fans, it is because this screenshot was used on the cover of the making of Star Trek after its second printing forward. So the 46th episode, Gamesters of Triskelion, they needed to have two new shots added. The first of which, which I call bridge zoom, is actually very reminiscent of the original cage shot. In this case, the Enterprise approaches and it passes just under us as we literally zoom in tight on the top bridge dome. The second shot ended up replacing pretty much all of the earlier shots where we had seen the Enterprise from behind. Now, early in season one, we saw this kind of shot but it was just above the rear right nacelle. It would sometimes be combined with a veer off to the left. Then we saw a shot created that showed the back of the Enterprise as it faced a planet. That clip put us below the level of the ship's port side. This shot would be used in all of those use cases going forward, appearing 33 times in 17 episodes. Now in the 48th episode filmed, The Immunity Syndrome, they ended up needing a total of 17 clips of the Enterprise. All but one came from earlier episodes. The one they needed, well, that was truly a new and remarkable shot where we actually close in and tight on the lower sensor dome. Amazingly, they only used this one other time in the lights of Zetar. So the 53rd episode filmed was, of course, the ultimate computer. Here we are given a much better shot showing the Enterprise coming straight at us in a flyby. But unlike the others that we've seen earlier, this flyby is level and not slightly angled. And it no longer comes directly at us as the last level flyby shot did. After its appearance in this episode in season two, it became a standard shot in season three. So the 69th production episode is the last episode that used new footage of the Enterprise model. A track in that ends with a close-up of the lower sensor dome on the saucer. While it wasn't used until Season 3, it was obviously filmed in Season 2. Remember that after Season 2 was completed, they put the Enterprise in storage, and it stayed there until well after the series ended when it was on loan to a college in California. As such, though, this shot was never really seen in the clear, meaning that in That Which Survives, it had a shake effect that I've tried to remove a little bit. And when it was seen in Let That Be Your Last Battlefield, it had the episode's title superimposed on it, so you never really get a good look at this clip the way we have the others. So as we come to the end, let's look at these shots by the numbers. The most Enterprise clips in a single episode? Doomsday Machine, 49 different shots. Most seen Enterprise clip? Orbiting toward us, 113 appearances. Number of the times an Enterprise clip was filmed and only used once? 12. Number of times the cage clips were used later? 44. The number of times where no man has gone before clips were used? 
171. The total number of Enterprise shots were 62. The total number of Cage Enterprise shots were 7. The total number of Where No Man Has Gone Before shots were 8. The total number of Enterprise shots in Season 1 were 25. And the total number of Enterprise shots in Season 2 were 22. Remember, there were no shots in Season 3. So this next set of stats is just to please my inner nerd. The number of times the 11-foot model was filmed for the TV series was 43 times. The number of times the 3-foot Enterprise was filmed to appear as the Enterprise in the series, 11 times. The number of times they used an AMT model, 7. And the number of times they used the 3-inch Metal Enterprise, 